Hello. Hello. stuff. Any of that stuff accurate? Oh no, it's this way. Hello and welcome back to uh, Metal Gear Solid, excuse me, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Come with me? Here you go, hang on. I'll see you later, buddy. He's ours now. He's adorable. Okay. I've got cassette tapes out the ass. So, while moving between areas, I think I'm going to be using these to cover the things, unless I don't have them, in which case then I will start just uh, putting them out instead of... Why does it say I have 14? Oh, because I have those as well. Alright, cool. You were hospitalized in Dekelia, Oh, shit. Hi. Area on Cyprus. It's part of British yeah. overseas territory that falls outside of Cypriot jurisdiction. You got moved from Cuba's little America right into Cyprus's little Britain. Why to kill you? The UK and the US remain close allies. The last place Cypher would think to look for you is inside their own system. That's what kept you safe in British Military Hospital for nine years. The safest place from a whale is inside its own belly. You were a regular Geppetto. Well, it wasn't Pinocchio who led me out to safety. So who was that guy? Cypher went so far as to attack British territory, burning their own ally. That's how badly they wanted you dead. He said I was in a British military hospital, but the doctor had a Greek accent. Oh, Greek. He wasn't speaking German. Easier to trust them. The Kelly is also home to Greek Cypriots, after all. What about the Turks? They haven't returned to the south. Not yet. The Cyprus dispute is still a long way from resolved. The country is just as split as it was in 74. Turkish Cypriots in the north, Greek Cypriots in the south. Between them, the Green Line, the UN established. And the Calia sits right on top of it. It does. Part of the buffer zone between the two groups. Another reason it was the perfect place to hide you. Easy to spot any outsiders snooping around. So how do things stand? Now, last year, the Turks declared that the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is an independent state. Though it's only Turkey. In the past, the Greeks and Turks lived side by side in the same villages. There are reasons to fight. Those you made it. First, use the binoculars to locate the communications equipment at the facility. But once you spark something like this, it's impossible to control. Both sides build up grudges like death. Without the foresight to see that each act of revenge just bans the flames, and then it's too late for other nations to rush in with peace talks. The embers keep on smoldering. Each nation's arrogance only breeds anarchy. The world is paralyzed by this hunger for revenge. Cyprus is no different. Just have to actually get them to stop following me. Alright, the coast is clear. Mission complete. Sweet. 
Mmm, nice. Mission complete. Great work. And the bond with the horse went up a little bit. Always good. We don't have to look at those credits. How are you feeling, boss? Getting used to being in the field again? Having choppers and a horse at your disposal is indispensable for operating in the wilds of Afghanistan. I've gone ahead and arranged for you to be able to develop and customize weaponry for support choppers. And you can also develop new equipment for D-Horse if you like. Use your iDroid to start development as needed. I'll do that in between episodes. <coughs> Thank you, though. Remember the guys <laughs> you brought back from the base in Cuba nine years ago? Believe it or not, some of them survived. <laughs> What's up, Hideo? Oh, some I don't know what that back was back going. Wanted in. They're good men. Our brothers in fate. They'll be glad to know you've seen them here. <laughs> I do love Hideo Kojima, can I? Be an assistant. Amber Fox. I recognize her and don't recognize her at the same time. Wild Harrier. Hungry Crocodile. I think these are all references, but I don't. Because these guys came from... Um... He says. Jesus. Look at him. Mitch, here's the dog you brought back. Bit of a troublemaker. Not sure about the breed, though. He'll get bigger? Uh huh. Like this. You know, I can look after him. He's still a pup, so he doesn't listen. I have a feeling someday he'll be useful. I suspect you discovered a real diamond in the rough. The little polish. I say we got a true diamond dog on our hands. And of course, it's missing an eye. Dee Dee, right? Oslin raising hounds. Come on, Didi. God, if he ain't fucking adorable. <laughs> the good old Phantom Cigar, the electronic cigar now. Which also makes time go by. Funnily enough. So, let's get the blood off of us real quick and head straight into the next mission. Wait. Helicopter, please come back. Um, helicopter, pick up. The, the place I was, please. Chain with me, boss. How about it? This is a big one. On station at LZ. You're welcome, Growling Harrier. Interesting name. Are we? Nice one. Away we will. Sir. 
Brass Armadillo. <laughs> Good name. Night Crocodile. Oh, I recognize these guys. Okay. I think those guys were in the uh, special. Special collection. Excuse me, good me. By connecting your iDroid to the onboard computer, you turn the chopper into your own Aerial Command Center, or ACC. Some elements of staff assignment and R&D of weapons and items can only be performed from there. Take as long as you need to consider all your options. Heading to Afghanistan. Let's roll. Spetsnaz Detachment Commander. Your orders are to take him out. With skills like his, it'd be a shame to waste him. But I'll leave the method up to you. Boss, make your way to Deshago Calais and eliminate the target. Well, I don't know. If you say his skills are worth something, might be better to pick him up. Attending the LA Olympics? Yeah. 
Andropov's death has changed some things. They're calling it revenge for the Western boycott of the Moscow Olympics. The country's boycotted the Moscow Olympics? Yes. In protest of the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan, over 50 countries were absent. It's too bad I didn't get to see Yamashita's judo. When the 40th Army crossed the Amu River four years ago, detente went right out the window. The U.S. Congress chose not to ratify SALT II, and Reagan's hardline politics won in the presidency in a landslide. According to him, the Soviet Union's an evil empire. The Second Cold War. And there's been no end to regional conflicts and civil wars. Levin arrived at the objective. Your target should be somewhere in that outpost. And don't forget, he has a Spetsnaz recon detail with him. Keep your guard up. But then the driving force on the Egyptian side, President Sadat, was assassinated afterward. Apparently, his actions were considered a betrayal of his fellow Arabs. Islamic extremists? Yes. Fundamentalist extremists have been responsible for some bold acts of terrorism and resistance. Take a good look at their faces so we can ID the targets. Embassy workers hostage and suicide bombings in Lebanon. Over 300 foreign soldiers stationed there have been killed. The countries have yet to develop an effective means of dealing with terrorism. Afraid of losing their own men, they pulled their forces out, handing private forces a golden opportunity. Private forces? Small armies with no national affiliation, working for the highest bidder. That's right, they got the idea from you. After Mother Base went down, they began spreading to meet the soaring demand. Miller's organization is just one of many PFs now. The entire world is after you. But at the same time, it needs you too. Miller told me about what happened in the Caribbean nine years ago. You do remember Miller. You'd formed a private army with him. An army with no allegiance to a nation. I remember, but... I see. You're not sure what's fact and what's a fantasy caused by the coma. It's still all a mess, huh? All I can do is tell you the facts as they were told to me. I've gone easy on you up until now. But this is where the hard stuff begins. 1974, the year before you entered your coma. You were in Colombia, operating with a small unit of men. Basically mercenaries. Miller was among them. Miller was trying to find a way to turn his and your talents into a line of work. He was looking to start a business where you would fight on behalf of others around the world. Those who needed military force. But the reality was, at that time, you didn't have enough gear to equip your own men. Then Miller came across this client. It was a huge job he was offering, but you had a shot at pulling it off. You accepted it and headed into Costa Rica. The client even threw in an offshore facility in the Caribbean. The mother base. That would be your new base of operations. Miller sure did have a head for business. As your mission went on, your unit grew and grew. More weapons, more money. Before you knew it, you were commanding 300 men. As the organization got bigger, your military power swelled to match. It got so the international community couldn't afford to ignore you. You were just too damn successful for your own good. You, your men, had worn out your welcome. Everyone was out for you. East, West, First World, Third. It was only a matter of time before someone took you down. And that was XOF. Officially, they're an anti-terror unit under the CIA. In reality, they're Cypher's private strike force. They lured you to Cuba using Chico, the Nicaraguan revolutionary kid, and Paz, a mole who worked for Cypher as bait. While you were gone, moving as a nuclear inspection team, stormed Mother Base. At the same time, C4 they placed on the strut lines went off. The whole thing went down in minutes. XOF. Kisses and hugs followed by a big F U. All because of Miller's blind spot. A back door into Mother Base no one expected. You remember a certain scientist. Huey was responsible for bringing the inspection team on board. Giving the enemy a perfect opportunity to hit you at home. You were returning from Cuba when it happened. Mother Base came damn close to taking you with it into the Caribbean. Those of your men out on assignment returned right away. They refused to believe the wreckage in the water they found was Mother Base. They checked the coordinates again and again. 
again. Until reality finally settled in. You were supposed to die that day. That was XOF's primary objective. As far as most folks know, you did. The first doctor to see you wasn't even sure what he was looking at. Before they'd even finished operating, your men moved you to that hospital in Cyprus. It was a woman named Eva who arranged that. Rings a bell, hmm? Most men in your condition would have been written off right from the start. But you survived. You went straight down to hell, and they pulled you out. Your eye wide open. Full of venom. The days of naked snake are long gone. Welcome back, Venom Snake. This world still needs you. Your snake, try this on. A prosthetic arm. Yeah, Miller was calling it the arm that wasn't there. The physiotherapy's going well. Your arm's bulked up enough for it to fit. There. Perfect. A little time with it, and it'll work better than the real thing. What do you think? Hmm. I can still feel my real arm. Well, you better get used to this one quick. You have any pain? Every now and then. Where? My fingertips. My left fingertips. Uh, sounds like phantom pain. Your brain still remembers your old hand. Yeah. What about your vision? Can you see okay? Yeah, at the moment. Now, the shrapnel in your skull is pressing on your optic nerve. I'm told any hard impact could have an effect on your visual cortex. Yeah. The doctor mentioned that. Your brain might process visual information incorrectly. In other words, you could have hallucinations. You might see things that aren't there, and not see things as they really are. You experience any of that? I think so. Right after I wake up, colors look faded. Colors, huh? Well, that's not a major concern in and of itself, but it could mean the difference between life and death in the field. You'll need to watch out for that. Oh, well. All right. You should continue your That's the target. Soon. It's the last chance you'll get. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, it wouldn't be a waste to kill him. But putting him to sleep doesn't count as eliminating him. Neither just knocking him out. Well, that was unfortunate. But you guys did get the point of what I was trying to do there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and finish off that mission. Then I'll meet you at the next one. I'm going to save that guy. Put his skills to actual use. See you guys then. Being held prisoner at the Watson barracks. You need to find him and get him out. He tried to defect from the base camp up north, but it didn't work out. Now they're holding him at Watson. He's offered his technical skills to us as long as we can guarantee his safety. You have to extract the target. <clears throat> Hello and welcome back to Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. I succeeded in getting a fighter over to our side. Now we're going after an engineer, it would seem. Boss, your target just happens to be the man who developed your prosthetic hand. Fascinating. He's the only one capable of maintaining it. If we bring him in, I'm sure he'll be able to modify it in all kinds of ways as well. Yep. Osla. I hear they started calling you Shalashaska in Afghanistan. What's that about? You know the term Golden Crescent. <sighs> it's a type of medicinal plant. We can use that to make tranquilizer rounds more potent. Associated with a type of forced labor it's you know the term Sharashka? It's slang for a suspicious, hastily thrown together organization. The word became associated with a type of forced labor facility in the Soviet Gulag system. Yeah. OKB scientists and engineers who'd been convicted of crimes were sent to a Sharashka for forced RD. The Sharashkas were supervised by a Lavrenti. That's the Waxin barracks. The target is somewhere inside that outpost. 
The Soviets consider him a traitor now, so he'll be treated like any other prisoner. Diamond Dogs is different. Of course, under the official name, the Shiroshkas were supervised by Lavrenti Berea of the NKVD, the secret police. Under the official name, 4th yeah. Special Department. Yeah. Forest research? That's not very different from what we do here. <laughs> Diamond Dogs is different. Everyone here believes in you. Regardless of where they came from or why they're here, they revere you. And they're fighting because it was their choice. And if it wasn't, they'd leave? Who knows? That's our reality here, whether it's real or not. If there's another truth, I don't want to know it. All that matters is, that's the concept that's taken shape in their heads. The traces of a group ideology, our superstructure, to put it in Marxist terms. All right. Go on. Right. So anyway, at some point the enemy started calling me Sharashka. This was after the war in Afghanistan broke out. While I was keeping an eye on you in that hospital, I was also heading up interrogations here. The men I broke gave up their comrades and families, everything they wanted to protect the most. No real cause for it. I just let myself get caught up in the old Russian pride. And suddenly I received the honor of becoming special interrogation advisor to the forced labor camps. But the more men I interrogated, the more people saw me as just that, the interrogator. It helped cover my real objective of keeping you safe. You went that far for me. Far enough to keep you alive. I ended up being... ...alone among the Afghan guerrillas. Some of them would have seen me on the battlefield. And that's how I got the second half of the name. Shashka. It's a sword. A type of saber from the Caucasus. Russian dragoons and Cossacks carried them into battle. Now, the Russian Empire had a general by the name of Fyodor Arturovich Keller. His bravery earned him the nickname Russia's Greatest Shashka. Someone must have known about that, because somewhere along the line, Shashka got stuck on the end of Sharashka. The guerrillas were using the name amongst themselves. By the time I got to hearing about it, pronunciation had wound up as Shala Shashka. So, half gulag, half hero sword. It was a perfect fit. But you see how rumors and ideas about people can get out of hand fast. Once you create a character and put it out there in public mind, it warps and twists with every baseless rumor. And before you know it, all people see are phantoms. In my case, it works out just fine. I'm plenty used to working under aliases. That treaty was drawn up to limit not just the size of the U.S. and Soviet Union's nuclear arsenals, but also their delivery systems. The whole deal. That's when we thought all those years of negotiations had paid off, somebody decides to invade Afghanistan. The time it couldn't have been worse. The president was in the middle of the SALT II talks back then. You mean while you were busy trying to stop Peace Walker? I heard. President Ford was meeting with the general secretary in Vladivostok. In his absence, the political brass in America detected what they didn't realize was false nuclear launch data from Peace Walker. They were on the verge of ordering a retaliatory nuclear strike. Coleman's big idea? Humans are incapable of destroying themselves. Turns out he never knew what humans are capable of. If that AI, I mean, the boss, hadn't found a way to stop the big data transmission, they probably would have gone ahead with the launch. Deterrence was revealed as the pipe dream it was. All thanks to you, and her. The U.S.-Soviet talks looked set to fall through. What happened in Nicaragua no doubt helped trigger a change of heart. But in the end... Those are raw diamonds. Collecting them as assets will raise our GMP. They turned by your hand. I first met you 20 years ago now. The place was Selenyarsk in the Soviet Union. We were enemies. I was with the GRU. You were still fighting for America. 1964, Operation Snake Eater. Its objective, the assassination of the legendary soldier known as the Boss. 
When you returned home successful, they awarded you the title Big Boss. Boss, you entered a building. Always keep an escape route in mind when you head indoors. If you get surrounded, you'll have nowhere to run. The original members from Operation Snake Eater. From America, there was David O, or as he was to you, Major Zero. Don Anderson, a.k.a. your CO Zero, sought to carry on the boss's will by covertly establishing his own organization. You knew the original members from Operation Snake Eater. From America, there was David O, or as he was to you, Major Zero. Donald Anderson, a.k.a. Sigan. Dr. Clark, who went by a paramedic during the operation. And the fourth, you. From China, there was Eva. And me, Ocelot, from the Soviet Union. Six in total. To us, government notions of friend and foe were meaningless. As were East and West, we joined forces by our will alone. Our objective was to fulfill the boss's dying wish. To make the world one. And to do it, Zero used the philosopher's... A dumpster. Weapon. Looks big enough to hide somebody. You could stash a downed enemy in there, or hide in it yourself. Just don't stand too close to me afterward. I, on the other hand, was left with a problem. You only recovered half of the legacy. I had to locate the eye on the other hand. And our objective was to fulfill the boss's dying wish. To make the world one. And to do it, Zero used the Philosopher's Legacy. The secret war fund you obtained during Operation Snake Eater. This organization would go on to become... Cypher. I, on the other hand, was left with a problem. You only recovered half of the legacy. I had to locate the other half myself. When I found the funds, I passed them on to Zero, just as you wanted. I still trusted him in those days. We thought what he was doing was the boss's will, until he started that one project. Les enfants terribles, Zero called her. You parted ways, as did Eva, leaving only Anderson and Clark still with him. I maintained limited contact. Although, truth be told, we were just keeping tabs on one another. The reason was always you. After you returned to the Army and created Foxhound, you left America. For a time, even I'd lost track of you. I'd imagine Zero did, too. You always were the best when it came to hide-and-seek. Zero created Cypher, an information network that happened to every corner of the globe. Woven together, Cypher's arteries make the world just one big organism. And that's not all. It also monitors the thorn in Zero's side. That's you, tracking your coordinates wherever you might go. The further you strayed from your roots, the larger Zero became. It's as if he was trying to close the gap between you. But before long, appeared from public life. Only a few people had direct contact with him. For a time, I was one of them. Then a year after you fell into your coma, he slipped out of sight entirely. Since then, nothing. No photos, no recordings, not even a reliable rumor. You gotta extract him. I tried every method I could think of, but Zero was gone. Freed of his control, his creation, his power continued to grow. Cypher is a great beast, and Zero was its spine. But even without it, it's endured, evolved. But now its body is rotting. Subject on board. Leave the rest to us. Parasites like the ones who attacked you nine years ago in the Caribbean, and then at the hospital. Cypher's Black Ops Unit, XOF. They learned where you were, and came to wipe the slate clean. That's the target. Looks like we found him. Process. Yeah, you boys tell him. Это мой шедевр. 
Эти протезы — это скучно. Я создаю биомеханические гибиды. Poor bastard. Target extraction confirmed. Your objectives complete. Exfiltrate out of the hot zone by chopper or on land. You destroyed their anti-air radar? It wasn't one of the targets, but that's put a hole in their air surveillance. The chopper will be able to get in close now. You can designate a landing zone near the outpost. Christmas Eve, 1979. The Soviet Union rolled into Afghanistan. Muslims had revolted against the Soviet-friendly regime established the year before. The DRA forces could no longer contain it themselves, so the Soviets went in to intervene. The Afghan government was powerless and fraught with infighting. They lost the hearts and minds of the people, and that alarmed the Soviet leadership. With the Islamic Revolution happening in Iran, the Soviets felt they had to act fast or risk the spread of Islamic revivalism. A superpower sending a motorized rifle division against men on horseback with antique rifles. Everyone thought it'd be over in an instant. Only it wasn't. Some Muslims made their fight a jihad, a holy war, and began a guerrilla campaign on all fronts. A war of attrition. These fighters call themselves Mujahideen. They're being supported by the West in Pakistan. That's why Miller was involved. He was training them near the Zero Line, sponsored by the CIA. The war has become a nightmare for the Soviet troops stationed here. They thought they'd be headed home in six months the most. Then a year passed. Two years. Now here we are four years on with no exit in sight. Afghanistan has become the Soviet Union's Vietnam. The Soviet troops on the ground want to go home. <laughs> Sorry, Ocelot. We'll get to that one next time. Ooh, that's a lot of development projects. We're gonna, do, but we're gonna take a look at some of the side missions that we can do. Ooh, S rank for once. Excuse me. The engineer we rescued mm, hello. is extremely cooperative. The guys on the R and D team are glad to have him aboard. Thing is, his specialty is in mechanics, but something called bionics, engineering based on biology. He's already submitted a proposal for modifying your prosthetic arm. If you're interested, go ahead and give the development order. Hmm, I can now change all my prosthetics. Sweet. Hello, snake. But yes, we'll go through with the next hello. Yes, I've already looked at these, thank you. Tasks aplenty. Oh, interpreter, thank God. Please. Sweet. So we're gonna look at these because um, right now the next main mission is gonna be a long one. It's gonna have actual plot to it, so I'm going to save that for its own episode in case it runs longer than I want it to. Especially since I already made this a bit of a longer one than I thought I was going to. Or that mission took longer than I thought it was going to at the very least. Ta -ta 
These ones don't have a uh, credit entrances or anything. The Soviet troops on the ground want to go home, but at least they have homes to go back to. The Afghans have lost theirs. The Soviets destroy the Kishloks, villages, wherever they can. They burn down homes and fields, fill in wells, turn pastures into minefields. It's created a mass of refugees who fled to Pakistan. If the Mujahideen are fish swimming around the villages, the Soviets will go so far as to dry out their ocean. But this has had a big price. There's bitter resentment among the Afghans, and they're taking out their anger on the soldiers on the front lines. Among the Mujahideen are the Pashtun people. They're fiercely devoted to their That's the target. Revenge. Soviets they've captured have had their hands, feet, and noses cut off before being left to die at the side of the road, just to show their comrades what they're capable of. Friendlies who come across them can do nothing but put them out of their misery. Then they burn down another village in retaliation. And the cycle of vengeance goes on. On and on and on, my friend. Mm, Russian. I speak no Russian. I'll take both of you. The subject on board. Leave the rest to us. See if there's anything in here worth taking. Ooh, yes. Lovely. Ooh, and some rare diamonds. A raw diamond. That language specialist you extracted has been very cooperative. Says he's always dreamed of living a free life, like folks in the West. What are the odds, huh? Mm. We got ahead and placed him in the support unit. His job is Russian interpretation. Now you'll know what Soviet soldiers are saying. You can even interrogate them. Should give you an edge in the mission. Absolutely. Now, I should be able to see, I was going to say, I think I can still see the other one. There we go, put a marker there. There you go. That's definitely going to give us some time to listen to some cassette tapes. This war. The Kremlin never expected to have this much trouble against the Mujahideen. Afghanistan is a tribal society. Tradition demands that its people stand up to any outsiders who set foot on their land. With the honor of their people at stake, they have everything to fight for. No matter how hard the Soviets hit them, they continue to appear out of nowhere striking back then vanishing again but there's one thing even the mujahideen fear every last one of them the soviet gunships they're highly maneuverable and equipped with massive firepower plus the underside of the fuselage is heavily armored the mujahideen can barely scratch them with their small arms anyone who hangs around gets mowed down by the gunships heavy machine guns this new honeybee weapon that was given to the hamid fighters it's no doubt something to help them strike back against the gunships. Which makes it a weapon that could change the course of the war. Those guerrilla fighters known as Mujahideen don't actually belong to a single organization. Afghanistan is a multi-ethnic country. You've got the Pashtuns, the Tajiks, Uzbeks, Hazaras, and each of them is split into their own tribes, large and small. Each ethnicity has several rebel organizations that their various tribes gather under. They're united under the banner of Jihad. That doesn't mean they work like a single standing army. Just look at the area around Smasi Fort. 
A lot of Tajiks use the dawn soon. Your surroundings will be easier to see, but that goes for the enemy as well. The guard detail in Soviet outpost changes in the morning too. Watch yourself. These are based out of the city of Peshawar. We passed through it on the western edge of Pakistan. The Pashtun people have long lived in Afghanistan and western Pakistan. They used to travel back and forth frequently. Then Britain went and established the border that still stands today. The Hamid fighters get generous support from the Pakistani government. The government wants to use them to secure influence over Afghanistan. Their liaison with the Hamids is Inner Services Intelligence, and behind the ISI, you have the CIA. That's probably how the honeybee ended up in the hands of the Hamid men. Honeybee, you say? Hmm. We're gonna have to get our hands on that. Guys, what about the unit that attacked us in the mist? You knew something about them. That wasn't my first run-in with them. It happened right before I was captured by the Soviets. We were on the Zero Line that day. The Afghan side. On our way back from training Mujahideen at a mountain camp in Kuna province. There's a lot of that work in Afghanistan. Most PFs shy away from it because it draws too much attention. But for us, that was the whole point. The job itself went great. We just had to make it back to a tribal area in Pakistan. But all of a sudden, visibility got real bad. It was no sandstorm. Our point man gave the strange report. He said he could see skulls in the mist. Skulls. The next moment he went silent. We scrambled into formation, right before his arms and legs came raining down on us. It was always supposed to be a dangerous mission, so I had Diamond Dogs very best with me. We were calling out to each other. One by one, the voices just went dead. Whatever happened to me, I lost consciousness before I knew it. When I came to, I was in a Soviet camp, tied to an interrogation chair. Could they be some new Spetsnaz unit? No. The ones that interrogated me were just the average rank and file. Whatever group attacked us, the way they moved was just insane. And that mist, appearing out of nowhere. The Soviets don't have tech like that. If they did, Ocelot would have heard about it. I doubt the West does either. Otherwise, the folks at Langley would be sleeping a lot. That's Terragon, a type of medicinal plant. It contains trace amounts of a benzodiazepine derivative that's the active ingredient in pentazamine. If I was their target, they wouldn't have just handed me over to the 40th Army. Whatever the case, we need to watch our step. So I don't think they planned that. I wish I knew why they'd come after you. If they did, Ocelot would have heard about it. I doubt the West does either. Otherwise, the folks at Langley would be sleeping a lot easier. Why'd they come after you? Wish I knew. I'm the only one who survived. Though I don't think they planned it that way. If I was their target, they wouldn't have just handed me over to the 40th Army. Whatever the case, we need to watch our step until we know who they really are. The Wormwood, also known as Absinthium. That's used to make your phantom cigars. You just get the hell out of there. When I first started dealing with Zero, with Cypher, it was a somewhat parasitic relationship. Though, a mutually beneficial one. Cypher had no army of their own, so they wanted us. They wanted our strength. They approached me as a potential business partner, but they had other motives. Cypher coaxed us into Central America, into that U.S.-Soviet proxy war, to fuel Mother Base's growth. Once we were big enough, they'd force us to join them, that was the plan. That's why they had Paz still Zeke. Right. And if we refused, she would use Zeke to fire a nuke from Mother Base. The world would consider us a liability. The countries would unite to destroy us. We stopped the launch. And yet they still took us down. Through that fake inspection they orchestrated to cover up their sabotage. That power Cypher wanted. We don't have it anymore. So why are they still after you? Is it just the fear of leaving you alive? I don't know. Was Zero really... All I know is the man I knew wouldn't want this. What do you mean? We have to consider that it might not be Zero we're dealing with. We know virtually nothing about Cypher anymore. How big they've gotten, what they want, or even who they really are. The new mother base started out as a test drilling rig operated by a mineral resources supplier, but their project fell through. The Seychelles government was happy to hand the place over to us. It was just scrap on stilts. Hmm. So with a few dummy construction companies set up as fronts, 
We started renovating the half-finished rig. From the outside, it looked like the project was back on rails. Cause, you... What? I see what you're doing. Recreating the mother base we had nine years ago. Only this time. That's right. The mother base Cypher thought they destroyed will return from the grave to kill them. We'll prove to the world that we were the victors. And if we lose again? They can't fool us the same way twice. Now our enemies are in plain sight. And when our organization gets too big, we split it across companies. Any company that draws attention gets liquidated, and its capital is back-channeled into a new company. Most PFs are small-time operations anyway. And in this business, the minnows go bankrupt all the time. We've never aroused suspicion. Plus, we have Hewick. Hewick? Human Exploitation Company. It's a business specializing in intel gathering. Think of it as a civilian intelligence agency. Cause that's... Remember what they were trying to accomplish at the prison facility in Cuba? That gave me the idea. We dispatch moles into conflict zones around the world, and each sets up an intel network on... Then they stay in place to give us stable points of contact when other nations intervene in the complex. Hewick's strength is that it has a cutout at each level. You get your job from one guy, then you hand it off to another. No one has direct access. It's a perfect black box. Hewick members also work their way into the superpowers intelligence agencies to make sure Diamond Dogs gets work. We have those countries by the balls. That's our deterrent when we need it. Networking. In the intelligence community? Sure. That's how we've grown this far. When you go out on missions, intel from Hewick will be there to back you up. But despite all that, Cypher has its eyes on us. The only reason I'm not dead is that they needed to know where you were. I figured if you woke up, i go straight to you. That's why you made that ruckus at the Zero Line. Yeah. To make their own surveillance work against them. I think it took some of the heat off Cyprus. Cause... Then I just had to wait for you to save me. And I've gotten used to waiting. Cause... That's not all. It was a good chance to scout the market. And with the West wanting the Soviets out of... Black again, Carrot. Something of an ancestor to the domestic carrot. It's also a favorite of wild animals. ...by building up our Afghan presence. Why put Mother Base in the Seychelles? We're at the center of the world here. We're all the way out in the Indian Ocean. Come on. Lebanon, Sri Lanka, East Timor, and Africa. From here, our reach extends to conflict zones the world over, including Afghanistan, of course. So it's prime real estate for a mercenary. Exactly. Latin America isn't as close as I'd like, but we have a mandate for people to help in that department. And besides, the Seychelles government owes us a favor. Owes us? The Seychelles has strong ties to the East, which the West wanted to shake up. It came to a head three years ago, in an attempted coup. It was a force of South African mercenaries, with U.S. backing behind the scenes. That's the target. Only platoon size. But South Africa is home to some heavy PFs. Too much for the Seychelles to handle. In the end, they accepted help from the Tanzanian army. And Quill... Boss, get down! We set up the enemy smoke. That should enable you to sneak past enemies. The Seychelles military. And when we put down a mutiny within their forces, well, we made a lot of people happy. They don't pay us. They just let us have a piece of their offshore territory on the promise we'll come running. If something else happens. So we're bodyguards, too. It's a good setup. We can only take Mother Base so far here. We'll have to find somewhere else when this place starts getting big. Aren't you being a little hasty? Nothing hasty about it. You're back with us now. So, Kaz, the ship that took us from Cyprus, it used to be a whaler. Yeah, a Japanese vessel. How was the voyage? It was... <sighs> stimulating. <laughs> well, she was part of a whaling fleet up until a few years ago. Her displacement isn't anything to write home about, but she can really move. She still had plenty of life left in her, but then the work dried up. Global opposition to whaling has been mounting for years. Is that right? The push to ban it has been gaining traction for a little over a decade. Individual species came under protection as the years went on. And then two years ago, the IWC adopted a moratorium on commercial whaling. Several countries, including Japan, fought it to the bitter end. But eventually, most whaling companies had no choice but to throw in the towel. You ever tried whale snake? Can't say that I have. When I was a kid in Japan, practically everybody ate it. That good, huh? 
country was poor in those days, and whale was cheap. International opinions changed since then. In any case, that's why we were able to get a bargain price on the ship. Of course, we did end up spending five times the purchase price in modifications. He's coming too. Roger that. ...communications gear, while keeping the whaler look intact. Right now she's going around conducting SIGIN missions. In the future, we plan to use her as a communications relay base between you and Mother Base. And also as a chopper resupply vessel. Diamond Dogs. The word diamond originally comes from the Greek Adamas. It means indomitable, unyielding. Other words for the stones often mean eternal bond, fortitude, or purity. The same is true of the Star of Bethlehem flowers you laid on the boss's grave. They represent innocence, as well as chastity, yielding to no man while maintaining one's virtue. In other words, staying loyal to something. Excellent. And luckily with uh, ending of that collection of tapes we move on to our next mission later on so I'll be seeing you guys then